Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our new Songland reaction. This is for the Julia Michaels episode mm -hmm. that just aired on NBC tonight. You know, we're, we're a good chunk into this season, and I feel like at this point we're kind of back into the groove of things. We're back yeah. debating whether or not somebody makes the right choice or not. Yeah. This is a weird episode because I kind of feel like I liked multiple songs better than the one that was actually chosen in the end by Julia. I found it really interesting that she picked a song that she still wanted to change more afterwards. It was an interest it was an interesting choice. I don't know if she would have felt that way about any of them. The thing that I guess was kind of the weirdest to me, and I think it puts me in the strangest position after this episode than any other this season, is that Keegan's song, it was basically an entirely different song the second time we heard it. Yeah. I don't really have that much a connection to the new song. I think it's because I only feel like I really heard it once, so yeah. it's kind of all mixing together in my head. But we'll we'll talk all of this through, try to figure out the reasoning behind her choice and more. But before we dive in, if you guys do like this video, give us a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any other other updates that we've got coming up. So for me, this episode was quite different than the other ones. I mean, we've seen a lot of episodes this season where we kind of knew what song they were going to pick. And there's been a lot of songs that are really catchy, like Champagne Nights, and then we had uh, Sway, which, you know, we were dancing around <laughs> yeah, and singing forever. And even though Axel's song Scary didn't get chosen, it's been in my head since I watched that episode. <laughs> like, there are some songs this season that are really catchy, really powerful, really interesting. This episode was really strange for me because I found that there was a lot of songs where the lyrics were really important and very, like, just a lot of connection. Like, the song that Dan did, Numb. I think there's a lot of people out there that can relate to this, that idea that everyone's just sort of getting pounded with negative stuff every day in the news over and over again that you either become really numb to it or you become really angry to it. Yeah. If you're on Twitter, you know what I'm talking about. So there's just this, uh, the lyrics for a lot of these songs, I'm like, man, yeah, okay, I get it. Sad girls that, that Jenna did, I was just like, yeah, yeah, okay, I get this too. There's, she first sort of explained it that, she moved out to LA, her and her husband, and then it was sort of uh, really difficult for them. And we understand that because we moved out out here as well. And it was kind of like you're leaving your support system behind. It's hard to meet people when you're in your 30s and 40s. You know, most people meet people at work and school and whatever. And then you move somewhere new and it's like, oh man, my support system yeah. isn't here. And, and then she was sort of talking about how it's, about depression that you know it's okay to go through this stuff and i was just like man okay these lyrics great lyrics and then the music came in for a lot of them and i just couldn't kind of find the groove with them and then after when they changed them the same thing was happening i was like i just i'm not finding the groove here i will say that for me I loved Numb. I think Numb is really, really good. I would listen to Numb on the radio, online. I, it's Because I, you relate to it. Well, it might be because I relate to it, because I have, I have felt every feeling in this song dealing with where we are in the world right now. Absolutely. I, 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 I think it's a song that probably connects even better to people in May 2020 as opposed to whenever they filmed this. I'm not, I'm not saying that Julia's decision would have been any different if they recorded this live, but... But I just thought that that was a, such a smart vocal. I loved how when Dan was performing it, the later version, he would say the numb and there would be this tiny little break and then the music would kick in. It felt so unique to me and different. And it has this, this kind of like cool vibe where it wasn't really dancey, but it kind of generated, a, it, it, it created some like weird chemical reaction in my brain. It was like, oh, I'm not numb to numb anymore. What's going on? I'm kind of feeling this. I'm digging it. I, I liked that song so much, and I was so upset when she did not pick it because I thought, I was like, all right, this is going to be unique and different and exciting. And 
I think Keegan, this is gonna sound like the total like qualifier of all time, but I, I think Keegan is a really nice guy. Like I really like Keegan. Yeah. He's just, he was sweet and endearing and I feel like 90% of everyone on this show is either from Nashville or Los Angeles. It's like, he's just the dude living in a little town in Alabama. I don't know if I get caught up on the story aspect. I'm not saying Julia did. It's just I didn't have that much of a connection to his song rather than him. If it was just, can you take one of these people and like put them in your songwriting stable? Then yeah, sure, I would take Keegan, but I don't know as much about the song. Yeah, I mean, even when I first heard the lyrics of the song, it's sort of about this guy who sees this girl across the room and is really, you know, going to take his shot kind of thing. When I heard the premise, I was kind of like, why did they choose this song to bring to Julia? I mean, this isn't going to be a song she's going to connect to in that same kind of way. Then it was, okay, well, now we're going to kind of change all change all the lyrics to make it a little bit different or different enough for her. And then she chose it and then was still saying, and I still want to change more lyrics. So that's why I kind of felt almost like, they're just, it, and this isn't that there isn't a winner in the bunch, but there wasn't a winner in the bunch for her. But that some of these songs feel like they're winners in the bunch for someone else. Like, because I think that the lyrics of Keegan's song, they resonate with a lot of other people out there that may see someone across the room be like, yeah, you know, I'm going to take my shot kind of thing, but it just didn't feel like a match. I, I think given to you in the end, it felt like a nice enough song. And if I heard it a few more times, maybe I would get into it a little bit more. But I got to say, after the first round, I liked Too Late a lot, too, and she didn't end up even picking that for the next round. I was like, all right, this is catchy. I didn't, th I didn't think Egan was going to go to the next round because the, the, the criticism was that the song doesn't really work for her at all lyrically and they'd have to rehaul it. We just saw the week before them tell somebody that they would have to change the entire song. They didn't end up bringing them through, and they told Jeremy, oh, there's just a few little things that would need to be tweaked here or there. And then you don't put them through, and you put the person through, and you got to change the entire song. Yeah, and I kind of get where they're coming from with Too Late as well. This is something that we've heard in music a lot. The, I have regret, I made mistakes, take me back, that that. That is something that I think a lot of people have felt over time throughout their lives, but it is something that we've all heard before. This is a theme in music, the sort of, I have regrets, let's work it out. That's true, and I'm, not, I'm certainly not going to argue with it. I think the, the creative was a little bit overdone, sure. I, I don't know why. I think I just... I think I just like the melody of it. I think I would have wanted to hear it again when it was redone a little bit, but I, I will say this. The moment that Jenna comes out and starts doing Sad Girls and Julia says to her, I can see myself in you, I was really at that moment, I was like, all right, let's just wrap this episode up. Jenna's going to get the song. I I got a hot take. Yeah. Okay, let's hear it. Do you think the first version of Sad Girls was better? Because yes. I kind of think it was too. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. I mean... And I thought she, Julia, for sure was going to pick Jenna when she was like, oh man, I, I completely connect to this song. And because Julia is a person who really connects to her songs and songwriting and though this whole process is really meant for people like Julia that when Sad Girls came out, I was just like, okay, well, this has got to be one of the obvious choices for her. Yeah, I thought it was an obvious choice. She related to the songwriter. I, I think a lot of people would relate to the song. I don't even think you have to be a girl to relate to the song. I think Absolutely. you can be anybody. Yes. And I thought it had a message that was going to really kind of transcend. But yeah, I, the, the second version of it, I think it lost a little bit of the hook. It didn't feel as melodious. It didn't feel as pleasing to my ears. And Maybe I am just numb, pun intended, to that version of it. I, I don't know, but... Well, for me, it just, it really split up into two groups because we had Too Late and Give It To You or Glad You Came, as it was at the beginning, which are two stories that we have heard in music a lot. Talking about 
depression and talking about what's going on in the world and kind of becoming numb to it. These are things that we haven't heard as much in music. And that's why I thought she was going to kind of gravitate into storytelling that isn't really being told a lot right now. Maybe, maybe it is just an issue of these songs being a little bit too dark. And maybe it's sort of a, maybe she was thinking along the lines of, okay, who knows how long this current sentiment is going to be kind of going on there in the world. And if a year from now or two years from now, things are a little bit more positive. Maybe people won't be looking for these songs as much. They won't be as universal, but I don't know. I, I, I like unique ideas. I thought Sad Girls and Numb were the more unique ideas yeah. of the two. But we are not recording artists. Our musical careers are not on the line. I do not think they want me to just have an album of badly playing the saxophone and then putting that out there. So <laughs> it's been a while since I've played. Okay, or well, Coldplay covers. Or, yeah, me doing Coldplay cover. I, I do not believe they're going to love my version of The Scientist. But uh, anyway, what did you guys think about the Julia Michaels episode? Do you agree or disagree with their choices? Share in the comments. And if you guys do like this video, give us a like, subscribe. And you can support us further by checking the link in the description to the store. And we'll see you here next time.